Breaking free Tara Westover has always been a woman who knows what she wants. From an early age, she dreams of being able to read and write, to have access to knowledge that would help her make sense of the world around her. But growing up in rural Idaho in the 1990s, with parents who are devoutly religious and mistrustful of anything that contradicts their particular interpretation of scripture, the odds are stacked against her. Despite the challenges, Tara is a determined and resourceful young woman, willing to do whatever it takes to achieve her goals. She finds some solace in the library of the small town where she grows up, devouring books on history, science, and philosophy, and trying to teach herself math and grammar. But her father, a deeply troubled man with his own demons to contend with, is suspicious of the world outside their little community, and actively discourages her from pursuing any form of education beyond what he deems necessary. Undeterred, Tara finds a way to attend Brigham Young University, a Mormon institution in Utah, thanks to a combination of hard work, scholarships, and the support of her older brother Sean, who sees something special in her. It's a transformative experience for her, both intellectually and emotionally. For the first time in her life, she's surrounded by people who are open-minded, curious, and eager to learn, and who don't judge her for her upbringing or her lack of formal education. She excels academically, soaking up every word of her classes, and gradually comes to realize that she's not the ignorant, backward girl her father always made her feel like. But the more she learns, the harder it becomes to reconcile her past with her present. She starts to see the cracks in the story her family has been telling her all her life, the stories of divine intervention, of imminent apocalypse, of the evils of government and medicine. She starts to question the very foundation of her identity, her faith, and her relationships. And she realizes that in order to move forward, she needs to break free from the chains that have been holding her back. The pivotal moment comes when Tara comes face to face with the reality of her family's recklessness, in the form of a catastrophic car accident that nearly takes her life. She's rushed to the hospital, barely conscious, with a fractured skull and a severe concussion. Her parents refuse to let her have medical treatment, convinced that God will heal her if they pray hard enough. It takes the intervention of her older brother Tyler, who's also left the fold, to persuade them to let her go under the knife. It's a painful wake-up call for Tara, who realizes that her loyalty to her family has been keeping her from living a full and healthy life. From that point on, Tara starts to distance herself from her family, both physically and emotionally. She gets a scholarship to study at Cambridge University in the UK, where she's exposed to even more diverse perspectives and ways of thinking. She starts to write about her experiences, first in a blog, and then in a memoir that will go on to become a bestseller. And she starts to build a new life for herself, one that's based on her own values, her own passions, and her own sense of purpose. Breaking free from the ties that bind her isn't easy, and it comes with its own set of challenges and complications. But for Tara Westover, it's also the most liberating and empowering thing she's ever done. It's a testament to the human capacity for resilience, self-reinvention, and growth, and an inspiration to anyone who's ever had to overcome adversity to find their own path in life. Finding her voice, Tara Westover has always been a woman of few words. Growing up in a conservative Mormon household in rural Idaho, she wasn't given many opportunities to express herself, let alone to be heard. Her father was a staunch believer in the principle of silence is golden, and her mother was often so overwhelmed by the demands of raising seven children that she didn't have time to listen to Tara's thoughts and feelings. But as Tara grows older and starts to experience the world outside her family's tight-knit community, she begins to realize that her voice matters, that her words have power, and that she has a right to speak up for herself and for others. It's a slow and painful process, 
one that's fraught with setbacks and doubts, but it's also one that's transformative and empowering. One of the key moments in Tara's journey to finding her voice comes when she's studying at Brigham Young University. She's taking a class on social psychology, and one of the assignments is to write an essay on an experience of discrimination or oppression. Tara has never really thought of herself as a victim of anything, but as she starts to reflect on her upbringing, she realizes that she's been living in a world of repression, censorship, and control, where women are seen as inferior to men, education is discouraged, and critical thinking is discouraged. With a growing sense of indignation and anger, Tara writes an essay that lays out all the ways in which she's been silenced and marginalized, from being told that her opinions don't matter to being subjected to physical and emotional abuse from her brother Sean. It's a cathartic experience for her, a way of putting into words all the things she's been feeling but hasn't been able to express. And when she gets her essay back, she's surprised to find that her professor praises it as one of the best in the class, saying that it's powerful, insightful, and thought-provoking. From that point on, Tara starts to see her writing as a tool for empowerment, a way of making her voice heard and of challenging the status quo. She starts to write more essays and blog posts, sharing her thoughts on everything from politics to religion to education. And she starts to receive feedback from readers who identify with her story, who are inspired by her courage, and who thank her for giving them a voice as well. But it's not just writing that helps Tara find her voice. It's also the support and encouragement of the people around her, from her professors who see her potential to her friends who champion her ideas to her boyfriend who believes in her. With their help, Tara starts to take more risks, to speak up in class, to challenge her father's authority, and to pursue her dreams of graduate school and a career in academia. It's a long and circuitous journey, one that involves confronting her fears and doubts, facing her family's disapproval and rejection, and dealing with the scars of her past. But ultimately, for Tara Westover, finding her voice is the key to finding her true self, to embracing her own identity, and to living a life that's authentic and fulfilling. And it serves as a reminder to all of us of the power of speaking up, of standing up for what we believe in, and of finding our own voices in a world that often tries to silence us. Healing and forgiving this moment comes when Tara reconnects with her older brother Tyler, who she had lost touch with after he left their family years earlier. Tyler had always been a source of comfort and support for Tara, someone who understood her dreams and encouraged her to pursue them. But when he left home, she felt abandoned and lost, and the rift between them grew wider and wider. Years later, after Tara had left Idaho and established herself as a successful author and scholar, Tyler reached out to her, asking if they could talk. At first, Tara is hesitant, still feeling the pain of their past conflicts. But as they start to catch up, she realizes that Tyler has changed, that he's grown and evolved in his own way. He's no longer the angry and volatile young man she remembers, but someone who's calm, compassionate, and wise. As they spend more time together, Tara and Tyler start to wrestle with the demons of their past, confronting the abuse they suffered at the hands of their father, the trauma that tore their family apart, and the hurtful things they said and did to each other. It's a painful process, one that requires a lot of courage and vulnerability, but it's also one that brings them closer together. Through their conversations, Tara starts to see Tyler in a new light, as someone who's been through his own struggles and who's trying to make sense of his own life. And Tyler starts to see Tara as someone who's not just his little sister, but a grown woman with her own strengths and talents. They both start to acknowledge each other's pain, to apologize for their mistakes, and to express their love and support for one another. It's a powerful moment of healing and forgiveness, one that proves that even the most broken relationships can be mended if both parties are willing to listen, to learn, and to love. 
For Tara Westover, it's a bittersweet reminder of the family she left behind, but also a testament to the resilience of the human spirit, to the power of empathy and connection, and to the possibility of reconciliation and redemption. Overcoming Self-Doubt Tara's journey starts in her childhood, where she's constantly belittled and dismissed by her father, who doesn't believe in the value of education or in his daughter's potential. He routinely ridicules her for asking questions, for expressing her opinions, and for trying to learn from books. And while Tara is able to teach herself some basic math and grammar, she struggles with her self-esteem, feeling like she's not smart enough, not good enough, and not worthy enough. This self-doubt follows Tara into her college years, where she's surrounded by brilliant and accomplished students who seem to know more than she does about everything. She's constantly second-guessing herself, doubting her own abilities, and comparing herself to others. She's afraid to speak up in class, to voice her thoughts in essays, or to challenge her professors. And she's plagued by a sense of imposter syndrome, feeling like she doesn't belong in this world of academia and that she'll be exposed as a fraud at any moment. But as Tara starts to achieve success in her academic pursuits, she also starts to push back against her own self-doubt. She gains confidence in her writing as she starts to receive positive feedback from professors and readers. She starts to take risks in class, asking questions, participating in debates, and challenging her own assumptions. And she starts to find her own voice as she becomes more comfortable with who she is and what she believes. One of the most impactful moments in Tara's journey comes when she's studying for her PhD at Cambridge University in the UK. She's working on a dissertation about the history of radicalism in the American West, a topic that's close to her heart but also intimidating in its scope and complexity. She's struggling to find her footing, afraid that she doesn't have what it takes to finish her project or to make a contribution to her field. But one day, as she's reading through some archives and documents, she comes across a letter from a woman who lived in the West in the 19th century, a woman who's writing about her own doubts and fears. The woman describes how she feels like an imposter, like she doesn't know what she's doing, like she's not good enough to be taken seriously. And then the woman says something that resonates deeply with Tara, I cannot be a great woman, she thought. And because of her doubts, she was already halfway to failure. Those words become a turning point for Tara, a reminder that self-doubt is not a sign of weakness, but a common experience for anyone who's striving to achieve something. She starts to see that her own insecurities are not a reflection of her abilities, but a part of her journey. And with that newfound sense of perspective, she's able to overcome her self-doubt and complete her dissertation, earning her doctorate and becoming a respected scholar in her field. It's a powerful story of growth, resilience, and self-discovery, and a reminder to all of us that we can overcome our own self-doubt and insecurities if we're willing to believe in ourselves and to take one small step at a time. Summary There are several powerful lessons that can be learned from Tara Westover's memoir Educated, including 1. The importance of education Westover's story highlights the transformative power of education, which allowed her to break free from her abusive upbringing and become a successful scholar and writer. 2. The dangers of extremism Westover's family was deeply influenced by extremist beliefs that led to isolation, paranoia, and a distrust of the outside world. Her story shows how these beliefs can be harmful and destructive. 3. The impact of trauma Westover endured significant emotional and physical trauma, which affected her mental health and relationships. Her story demonstrates the long-lasting effects of trauma and the importance of seeking help and healing. 4. The power of resilience Despite facing significant adversity throughout her life, Westover never gave up on her dreams or her sense of self. 
Her story is a testament to the resilience of the human spirit and the capacity to overcome even the most difficult circumstances. 5. The potential for personal growth. Through her journey, Westover transforms from a frightened and insecure young woman into a confident and empowered adult. Her story highlights the potential for personal growth and self-discovery, no matter where you come from or what you've been through.